How's it going everybody? Just want to thank you for checking out my van. This is my 1994 Mitsubishi Delica L400. This is the high roof with the extended wheelbase, so this is the biggest one that you can get. And mine has a gas engine. It's a 3.0 liter V6. It actually has the same engine as the Mitsubishi Montero from the same year. So it's pretty easy to get parts for, so that's really a good part of having a gas one. And I just want to give a huge shout out to my friend Kyle. He really helped me a lot with this van and it wouldn't have been possible without him. But he helped me with the stuff that I didn't know how to do and you know it was just really great. I'm thankful for that every day I wake up in this van. So that's awesome. And I want to give a huge shout out to Northeast Auto Imports for providing the amazing platform. This van has been super reliable. There's like no rust on it. I think super clean, fairly low miles. It's got about 150,000 miles on it. So, you know, it's getting up there, but it's all right. And uh, yeah, they've just been super honest with me. And anytime I need help with the van or something, I give them a call and they're quick to answer and they always do what they can to help me out. So if you guys are looking for some cool vehicles, check out northeastautoimports.com. They have Delicas like this, as well as all sorts of other weird Japanese camper vans. And they also, they've got like Subarus, like Japanese imported Subarus and tons of cool stuff. With that being said, I will kind of show you guys how all these accessories work on the outside. So I got the rooftop deck, I've got some LED lights and I've got some solar as well, just to keep my battery topped up while I'm on the road. So here I have one LED above my sliding door and this thing's really great if I got to come out during the night and take a pee or something. And these are the solar panels. So these are two 24 volt panels and they're wired in series. So I have 48 volts going into my battery bank and they're 200 watts a piece. So I got 400 watts total. On the back, I've got a little backup camera. I've put Reflectix on all the rear windows just to kind of make it stealth on the inside. I don't want people looking in here while I'm doing my thing. So over here, we got the other LED light on this side. This is just great. I mean, I can have a lot of outdoor light during the night if I want to go in the woods and camp or something. So under the hood, I've upgraded the starting battery to an Optima deep cycle battery. And the reason being is I charge my house battery with this battery. And right here, I have a breaker and some two gauge wire. This is going to an inverter that I have inside of the van that charges my battery in the back. I'll kind of show you how this all works when we get to that. So up here on the rooftop deck, I've got my ladder. I tend to set this up after I've already climbed up here. It's pretty easy for me, but if I'm gonna be coming back and forth, just grabbing stuff, I tend to set that up. It makes it easier. Inside this toolbox, I've got all my woodworking tools, my Ryobi tool set, and I've got a little bit of gasoline, a chainsaw, as well as a jack and stuff to change a tire if I ever have a blowout. In here, this is a huge cargo bag. I just got this thing. The other one I had actually completely disintegrated within a couple weeks, so I had to return it, and I bought this one. Nice rubberized material. This thing is super durable, and I've just got like other things I don't want to keep in the van. I've got my awning in here, as well as a portable shower tent extra clothes like winter jackets and stuff so this is a really great place to keep extra stuff I've got 12 gallons of extra fresh water up here and I've got five pounds of extra propane because I've got little propane jugs in the van so that's how I refill them to save money give you guys a view of the solar panels here these things are freaking massive I didn't realize how big they were gonna be when I first purchased them but somehow I managed to make it all work and it fits so I guess we'll start with the cab area because you know, that's kind of where it all begins. This is actually a captain's chair, and these Delicas come stock with two of them, so they swivel around. And this was actually in the back of the van, so there was the two front seats, the two swivel seats in the middle, and then there was a bench in the back. So I kept the two swivel seats, and I took one of them, chopped up the rails and kind of modified the brackets and I made it so where that it fits the whole pattern on the front seat so I was able to get this thing in here nicely the only downside is I can't slide it back and forth anymore but it doesn't really matter because it's at a good spot but the benefit of it is get this thing on the seat this thing is really sick actually I've used it a bunch having friends in here and stuff it just really kind of opens the room in here and you know someone can sit here and I can still move around and do what I need to do and they're not going to get in my way so this is awesome and another cool feature I found out about these swivel chairs is the book. So I can just have these areas in the storage if I needed to for whatever reason, but I usually don't need to. So there's that. Here I've got my animal friends. So first things first, this is my friend George the alligator. He's very nice to me during the day. Sometimes he gets a little angry during the night, so I tend to leave him alone. I have my lovely friend Violet the octopus. She protects me. She looks out of the windshield to make sure there's no burglars trying to break in during the night. So uh, this is a good luck charm for me. My little tiny turtle friend, Fred. And Fred
Fred's an interesting one. He's very quiet, tends to keep to himself. So, you know, I kind of just let him sit up on the dash and do his little thing. Those are my animal friends. Um, <laughs> so, if you'll see right here, I got these cables coming through. That, that cable I just showed you guys before, the two gauge cable, it pretty much, it comes down and goes underneath. And then I drilled holes right here and ran the cables through here. And then they go inside to where the inverter is. It was kind of a pain in the, pain in the ass to figure out where I could run the cables. I couldn't find anywhere that was easy to push it through the dash. So I was like, well, I guess we're going under the van. And it's really the only good spot I found. So it looks kind of weird, but it works. Now we will get into my favorite part, the living area. Ta-da! First things first. Keep a little trash can in here because, you know, things get messy. You gotta have a place to put your trash, so that little guy stays there. This is my galley unit. I'll get inside here and show you guys how that works. First things first, I'll show you. I got a little flip-up countertop extension. I got these brackets on Amazon. They were like 15 bucks, and yeah, they just flip up, and it's 100 pounds of support, so I mean, I'm never really gonna be putting anything more than 100 pounds on there. These countertops I actually made myself. I used maple plywood. I'll show you a little more up close, but it's pretty much I used uh, half inch maple plywood, contact cemented both sides, and then I stuck it together and then I screwed it from the underside. And then I just applied a laminate on the top with the contact adhesive and just, you know, cut it and sanded it and put a spar urethane on it and it looks beautiful. So I, I'm very happy with the result and it was really cheap. That's kind of why I did it this way. Right here I've just got my remotes. Both of them are on Velcro. These are just for my lights on the inside. So one of them, I got LED strip lights and then I got some puck lights as well that are battery powered so I don't have to use my battery system for those. And they just stay here because I tend to lose everything so if I don't have it stuck to the wall, it will be gone in a matter of minutes. All you gotta do is you take the remote, turn the lights on, and this thing is awesome. I got a bunch of different colors on it. I got like red and greens and blues and all sorts of stuff. So this is great. Got my sign up there, Bitch Boulevard. I figured to add some character to the van, so why not? These are the puck lights right here. And they're really great. Um, they're battery operated, just triple A's. So this is my sink right here. And I made this plug for it when I cut out the hole for it. I just kept the piece from the countertop and then I shaped it, beveled it, and uh, made it so you can insert it back in here and have that countertop space. You don't lose any space in here, which is awesome. So this is an LK 15 by 15 by 10. So this is a really big sink for this van and it's got a cap there too. So I never get any smells from the gray tank. That's really great. Underneath here, I've got 10 gallons of fresh water in these military jugs and it's all strapped up there so it doesn't go flying when I'm driving around. And pretty much I've got a little foot pump down here. So you just put your foot on it and so you get fresh water coming out and it's all filtered. I usually fill up at a filtered water area. I got tons of stuff kind of just jammed down here that I don't really have room to put anywhere else, just like my toothbrush and all my hygiene accessories. So right here, you can't really see it, but I've got a three gallon bucket and that's where all the drain water goes and pretty much to mitigate having to unstrap this thing every single time the drain water gets full because you know, you got 10 gallons there, three gallons there, that's quite a difference. My buddy Kyle, who helped me with this, gave me the idea. I tapped a hole in the bottom of it and I installed a hose with a rubber grommet so that way it's waterproof. And then this is just a check valve on here. And I think I actually gotta dump it right now. But pretty much all you do to dump the gray tank is you come here and you just open it up. And then you get the drain water coming out of here. And I use biodegradable soap only and I don't wash food particles down the drain. So I can kind of just dump this anywhere for the most part. I mean, it's literally just like mildly soapy water for the most part. So this floor I did all by myself and all I did was three quarter inch Baltic birch with insulation underneath. And then I just rolled on this rubberized diamond plate vinyl, kind of like you see in the back of trucks. I just wanted something really, really durable and, and rugged. And this was exactly that. So, you know, I come in here with dirt and sand all over my feet and I can just sweep it all out the door. It's really easy to maintain. Along with that countertop extension that flips up. So I'll show you that again. That thing's awesome. This piece of wood I carry around in here, what this serves the purpose of. So this is my drawer, got all the kitchen stuff in here. And then this piece, you can just put it in there. Then you got yourself another little bit of countertop space. So I figured have everything kind of multi-purpose. 
And yeah, this, this thing has been excellent. I always use this to eat dinner and stuff. So up here, I've got my soap dispenser and just my sponge and a little scrubber. Got my paper towel rack. Got this guy at Lowe's, it was like 10 bucks, and then I just use a self-tapping screw and stuck it in there. Up there, that's my smoke and carbon monoxide detector for when I'm cooking inside. You just wanna make sure you're not getting gassed out. So that's great. And then I got my little incense burner there. And I made this little faucet too. I thought that this was a really cool, like rustic touch to the van, just a little pipe faucet. So since it's a pump sink, there's like a, a plastic hose that comes off it, just food grade hose. So pretty much all I did was ram the hose through this thing. And if you see it kind of just sticking out at the end there, it's just a little piece of hosing through there. So th this piping is really just for looks. It's essentially just a hose sticking through here. So right here is my clothing box and uh, Pretty much, I have it on a hydraulic strut, that thing's great. I actually have all my laundry up there, I gotta put it all away, but this thing is a lot bigger than it looks on camera. I can fit all my clothing in here, and then anything I don't fit in here, I just put it on the roof, so. I got plenty of space for my clothes, so that is not a bother to me at all. So as far as the bed goes, this is the bed right here. I built this, and I kinda had to change my design a couple times just to make it work how I wanted it to. So pretty much, it has a couple different purposes. It's, I mean, it's storage as well. So it's on hinges, so you can just pick this up. And then you got a bunch of storage underneath there. So I keep like my Reflectix covers for the front windows and just a uh, battery charger and just like extra tools and stuff under there. Keep my skateboard and my stove under that side. And pretty much, in the daytime, I keep it set up as a couch like this and it's really comfy to sit on. But then, when I wanna go to sleep during the night, you just grab the handle, let me move some stuff here. Got some batteries and such charging over here. But you just grab this, pull it out, walk back here, pull this out, and then the cushions kind of just drop in here. Get this one in here. So now, I got a full bed in here. This is a pretty much the same size as a Twin XL. It's honestly a little bit bigger, so I sleep plenty good on this. High density memory foam. I made these cushions myself, and I didn't sew them. I just used safety pins and kind of just wrapped them, and they're held together with safety pins. So I mean, it's fine. It's it's been working good. Maybe I'll get actual covers one day, but this will work good for now. All right, next to my galley, I've got kind of the battery station area. I've got a little fire extinguisher here, and I got my portable shower unit here. I haven't actually got to test this out much yet, but it's uh, all in one shower. It heats the water as well as it has a pump in there, so I can do it all with just this device, and it doesn't have to be hooked up to my water system, so that's really great. Here, I've got my cabinets. This is just like my kitchen cabinets, so here, this one flips up. I've got my cups and plates and dishes and my blender in here. Down here, I've got propane and all my accessories and pots and pans. In this one is my food pantry, so I just got food and stuff in here. In here we got spices and things of that nature. And these also double up as more table space. I kind of wanted these to function as that, so I made them drop down, and I have these cables on here that stops them from going all the way down. And they're pretty strong, so like, you know, when I have this thing pulled out as a table and I've got that flipped up, and then along with these, like I've got plenty of space in here to cook and do what I need to do. Right here is all of my switches. So this is my little Wi-Fi hotspot device. I've got this with my Verizon plan, and it's like 10 bucks extra for 100 gigs of data. So this thing is awesome when I'm off. Right here I've got my fan controllers. So if you'll see right here on my sunroof, Kyle made this piece of coroplast, which is, it's pretty much like cardboard, but it's made out of plastic. And he cut it to the shape of the sunroof, cut some holes in it, and then he used a few wing nuts, four wing nuts on each fan to hold it on there. And pretty much these are just wired. They come here, they have quick disconnects here so I can take this out if I want to. This thing's modular, so that's awesome. Then they just come down here, cables come down the side, go down, and then they go under the bed, and then over to the switches. So these are really, really great for when I'm cooking inside as well as when it gets hot in here. This one will pull air in, and this way will pull air out, so I can get really, really good ventilation. And during the night, I tend to turn the exhaust fan on, and I'll crack the window in the back, and I'll get like a wind tunnel coming through here. And then these are the switches for the lights and stuff. So I've got a 12 volt socket right here. So uh, I can just kind of plug this in here, turn it on, and then I can plug my phone in here. Or I have like a little fan that plugs into here, and just a couple other things. This is really great to have, I've realized. I've got this little shelf up here, just this little 
cubby right here so I tend to plug my phone in here and then I'll kind of just put it up here same with my wallet and my keys when I'm sleeping during the night so this is super great this switch and this switch run the outdoor lights those big LEDs I showed you these aren't hooked up yet they're just there if I want to hook up more stuff in the future in this little area this is kind of just where I stuff like my pillow and my sleeping bag and anything else that's kind of going to be used daily I figured have a little stuffing area this is my fridge this is an ice co 21 liter or something like that and this thing has been amazing. I have an insulated cover I bought for it. It was like 50 bucks extra, and it's really, really been worth it to have the cover because it gets really hot, and uh, this cover definitely helps keep the fridge cold. So inside, it's got the fridge area as well as a freezer area. So I mean, I've got plenty of room in here to pack groceries for like a week at a time. So that's super, super handy. So this is my battery station, and this is a Blue Eddy AC200P. So it's a 2,000 watt battery and it's got a 2,000 watt inverter built into it. So you just got your standard house plugs right here. And it also has the charge controller built into it. So I have the solar just plugged directly into it. You don't need any separate components. It's just all in one. It's really easy. So you can turn the, the 12 volt power on, DC on, and AC on. So, you know, it's really easy to use this thing. I definitely like the functionality of it. So it's been pretty decent so far. I have some issues with it, but uh, with everything you kind of get some issues but overall it's been very reliable and it keeps me nice and powered up on the road and pretty much I have this cable right here plugged into the house outlet and there's a power strip right in here one of those big like power strip things I have an extension cord plugged into that power strip and that goes to right here and I cut that end of it off and just wired it directly onto the outlet so if you're looking at this outlet, think of it essentially as a fancy extension cord because that's really all that it is. It's very simple the way that I did this. And I didn't need a bunch of outlets everywhere. I just have this one outlet. It's a GFCI receptacle, so it's safe to be here. And I use this just for like my blender and stuff when I'm, you know, or my vacuum sealer when I'm sealing up food and stuff. It works great. So I can charge this thing three different ways. So for one, I have the solar that's plugged in, so that's always bringing in power whenever there's sunlight hitting it. And as well, I have a battery to battery charger system, but mine's a little different because this thing just plugs into the wall. So pretty much I used an inverter as my charger instead of a DC to DC charger, but with the inverter, I can charge at about 40 amps. So this thing charges up fully in about two to three hours when I'm driving, so that's great. So how this functions is I have an extension cord. Well, I have the charger running back here, and then uh, the power brick kind of sits underneath this cabinet. I have an extension cord plugged into that. It runs underneath the bed, comes all the way this way, and this is the extension cord right here, and then it plugs into this inverter. So when the van is on and I'm driving, I just flick this inverter on. It'll take power from my deep cycle battery, and it'll come through the inverter, turn it into 120 volt power, and then it'll go into the extension cord into my battery system so that's been really efficient I don't really have much power loss with all the conversions because it's going from 12 volt to 120 volt so I, I was worried about that at first but it's really not a big deal it's very efficient and I charge very quickly this way as well down here I have one of those 15 amp NOCO shore power plugs right here if you can see that it's just like a little place to put an extension cord and pretty much this thing pops out of the back and I'll show you, gotta get it out. So it's on a splitter right here. So I have this splitter and I have an extension cord that I'll just kind of plug into that thing, throw it out the window, plug it into land power wherever I'm at. And then I have one extension cord that I plug in that I connect to my outlets and then I take this thing and I plug it into the other splitter so then I can charge my battery at the same time. So pretty much when I'm plugged into shore power, I can be charging my system and using my outlets on shore power at the exact same time. So that's, that's like a really cool feature and I really thought hard on this on how I could have shore power hook up completely in the van. So it, it's super cool being able to charge three different ways. I'm pretty much never running out of power. The last thing I'll show you guys is my outdoor kitchen area. So. When I was building the van, I really wanted to be able to cook outdoors as well because I saw a lot of people who did the design where they had those big pull-out drawers. And I didn't want to deal with that because I wanted to be able to have an indoor kitchen. But pretty much, I made this flip-up table. And this functions as my outdoor kitchen. And it's wonderful. Plenty big enough. I can fit my stove on here, cutting board, food. 
you know, whatever, whatever I need to. And I, I honestly use this quite often, especially being in Florida. I've been cooking outside a lot more than I am inside, just because, you know, doing it inside, it's it's a smaller space and it's not as you know nice as being out here and being able to stand up and do it. But I have the ability to do it if the weather sucks. So that's why I built the kitchen the way that I did, designed everything the way I did. And uh, I have this LED light here, so. This thing is just screwed into the roof right here with uh, some self-tapping screws and uh, pretty much the cord runs behind the cabinet and I attached it to a little 12 volt plug just you know it's like one of those plugs you plug into your cigarette outlet and this battery has one of those ports on it like a cigarette outlet port so all you do is just take it and you just plug it in and boom you got light and this thing is extremely bright it shines directly on the middle of the table, so while I'm cooking out here during the night or something, I got plenty of light out here. I'm never, never stranded in the dark, so that's really been a great feature of the van, and I love it because you know it's just cool and it, it adds a unique twist to the van. So, and then all you do is just you know you unlock the struts, fold it down. And I've got some some clicks on it, so that way it clicks into place and it doesn't shake around when we're driving. And it's nice too because it you know it just covers up the back nicely and looks nice. This is where all the electrical cables are. There I have a few I have a fuse box in here on this other side, like right next to the battery station, and that's where everything is hooked up. And all of the cables come out of here and they go along the back underneath this cabinet and then they go to all the switches right up there. I wanted my system super simple, so I kept all the switches in one area. I didn't have like a bunch of different switches everywhere because then you would have had to just run wires all over the place and I wasn't trying to do that. So I think my electrical stuff is really basic and I hope that I explain it in a way that makes sense. If you have any questions, please just leave a comment below and I'll do everything I can to explain. All right guys, so that wraps up the van tour. That's pretty much all I got to show you. And so far it's been great. I've been living on the road for a little over a month now and I've been super comfy. I really haven't missed out on any of the things that I had in my apartment besides just having extra empty space that I didn't really use. So um, yeah, no, this is this has been awesome so far and just like, I'm just so grateful that I followed through with this because I bought this van, started doing it and I kind of hit a point where I got frustrated because like I didn't know what to do. I didn't know anything about electrical. Like I knew how to do the woodwork, but the electrical just totally confused me. I had no idea what to do. And I just, you know, I, I buckled down and I realized that no one else is gonna do this besides me. And I have to follow through with my vision if I want this to happen. And that's exactly what happened. And it, it's just, it's a beautiful thing when you start a huge project like this and you see it through all the way to the end and you really manifest and accomplish it because being able to enjoy the fruits of my labor now has been unbelievable. I, I'm so thankful that I did this and anyone out there who's thinking of getting in a van or you know just even doing something a little more basic, I totally recommend it because it's a wonderful experience. It teaches you a lot about yourself and it teaches you how to be consistent with your efforts and um, you know, this has just been a, a wonderful opportunity, and I'm just thankful to be doing this. So, anyhow, I hope you liked the video. Please comment, like, and subscribe. Share this with anyone you think is cool. With that being said, I hope you all have a great evening. Peace out.